Students, I am very excited about the bullseye strategy because it gives all of you an opportunity to show how much you know. How many of you think it's awesome to be able to show your classmates what you know on a given topic? Do you like that idea? Yeah. yeah. All right. So in order to make this strategy work, what I'm going to ask you to do is to gently take your desks and slide them to the outside of the room. Go ahead. All right, all right, all right. Nice job, everybody, moving the desks. Here's what I need you to do right now. This dot represents the bullseye. And I want you to form a circle, try to make it neat, around this dot. Go ahead. Just try to tighten it up a little bit. Well done. And I'm going to back myself out. And if you could just give me a little bit of space, I want to explain how this active learning strategy works. I'm going to use an integrated language arts example. And let us say that I asked you to read the final few chapters of the book of Mice and Men. And some of you probably will have read it, and others maybe not. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for those of you that read the material like I asked, this is an opportunity for you to show the rest of the class how smart you are. How does that sound? Yeah. And for those of you that didn't read it, do you think you're going to feel a little mm, silly for not having read the material? What do you think? Yeah. That's an honest answer. So, if I ask you to tell me about Of Mice and Men, I want you to step forward according to how much you know. It's going to work like this. If I don't know anything, I stay here on the other side. If I know it's a book, and it's written by John Steinbeck, I would take a step forward. If I know it's a book, and it's written by John Steinbeck, and I know of, of something about the, the main characters, I can tell you how they're traveling and where they've been, I take another step forward. If I can start to give some names, if I can say it's two companions, and they're looking for work, and their names are George and Lenny, I take another step forward. How do I get right into the bullseye? How do I stand on top? Well, you have read the final few chapters, and you can tell me that George has to make an agonizing decision. There's a lynch mob that's coming for his companion, Lenny, because he did something terrible. And George knows that that lynch mob is probably going to do something torturous to his companion. And so he has to make that fateful decision about ending his life humanely. And I'm not telling you that's a right or wrong decision to make. But you understand the angst that he feels in that terrible moment and you can give me details and you can give me description about it then you're right here in the center and you also have shown everybody else in the class that you've read the material that I've asked you to read and that you understand it and it feels good to be smart doesn't it? <laughs> to have your classmates look at you and say you know what I wish I was standing right there where he is or where she is. And the next time that I ask you to read or to study your notes or to review the material, do you think you'll be more or less likely to do it? More or less likely. And that, again, is an honest answer. So are you ready for some questions? Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. So let's give this a try. And I'm going to use a math example. And it's going to relate to mean, median, mode, and ranges. We're going to start with mean. And I'm going to ask you a question about that. But I'm going to take some pressure off of you right now. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to step according to how much you know. So if you know a little something about mean, then you just take one step forward. If you know a little bit more, two steps. 
and on and on. If you feel like you're an expert on mean, where do you go? Bullseye. Bullseye. Correct. So how am I taking pressure off of you? I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. It doesn't matter if you stay on the outside, if you're a few steps forward, or if you're right here. I'm only going to call on you and have you share the information that you know if you raise your hand. So if you're sitting there thinking, or in this case, if you're standing there and you're thinking, oh, I really don't know much, and I'm going to look kind of silly to my classmates because I didn't read what I was supposed to read, you can still move in. And I will not call on you unless you raise your hand. However, in the future, when I ask you to review those notes, because we're going to use the bullseye strategy tomorrow, when I ask you to read those pages, when I ask you to study those vocabulary words, what are you going to do? Bingo. All right. If you know something about mean, I want you to step forward according to how much you feel you know. Go ahead and move. All right. Now I want you to raise your hand if you're willing to share. Raise your hand if you're willing to share. Okay, I'm going to work from the outside in. Haley, what can you tell me about mean? Um, all I really know about mean is you add all the numbers up. Okay, you add up some numbers. Awesome. You took one step forward. Perfect. Other hands. Who put their hands up? Angela, what do you know? Um, you divide by the number of numbers you have. You divide by the number of numbers that you have. Absolutely correct. Who else thinks they know something and is willing to share? All right, Nick, what do you know? Um, it's the average of a set of numbers. Okay, the average of a set of numbers. Absolutely. And lastly, Michael, what can you tell me? Um, say you have like five numbers, you would add up those five numbers, and then you would divide the, that number by five, and it's also called an average. Okay, so you can tell me, you add up the numbers, and then you take that grand total, and you divide by the number of numbers that you have. Is that right? Yep. Now you're standing right on the bullseye. Can we take that a step further? Can I give you a set of numbers? You've got to add them up in your head. Mm -hmm. and you've got to tell me what the mean is. Right. You do it? Yep. All right. Three All right. plus five okay. plus six All right. plus eight. Okay. Plus 13. Okay. And what is that total? 35. 35 is correct. How many numbers did I give you? I mean five. Five is correct. Seven. You're doing better than I can do right now. And what is the mean? Seven. Is he correct? Yeah. He is correct. Let's give a little something on that. All right, you can step back. Nice work, everyone. For our next math example, we're going to use median, median. It is time to aim high and set our sights on this active learning strategy entitled Bullseye. This diverse strategy is effective with a vast array of statements and questions. The Bullseye method works wonderfully with your key vocabulary terms, basic facts, as well as in-depth information open-ended questions relating to characters and events in your favorite classroom novel, math formulas, the life and times of famous scientists, artists, historical personalities, and so much more. Students love showing how much they know on the topic being discussed. At the beginning of the school year, I generally ask students to raise their hands if they want to share what they know. But as the year goes on, I respectfully ask students to share without raising their hands. I have little doubt this will soon become one of your favorite active learning strategies. You take the numbers and you put them in numeric order from the least to the most. And then you do what? And then you um, figure the number that's in the middle. 
and then you make a determination about the number that is in the middle. Awesome. Okay? Michael, you want to shine again? Sure. Um, say if you have two of the same numbers, yep. and they're in the middle, then it doesn't matter if they're two numbers, they're still... Where do you think Michael should be right now, incidentally? Yeah, go ahead. Let me ask all of you, how do you feel about where Michael is standing? Where do you wish you were? I wish I was there. Absolutely. I know if I have a math question, I know who I'm going to go to. Because he's so knowledgeable on the topic. And I want to be there. And again, you can bet, the next time I'm going to make sure I read, that I study, that I know, because I want my classmates to come to me. So, fantastic everybody, you can step back. And let's do mode this time. Mode. I am generally supportive of most answers given by my students, even if I personally do not agree with them. I know if I want to increase the amount of participation within my classroom, I must be enthusiastic and encouraging. However, in an effort to challenge my students, I also feel quite justified in providing alternative insights and ideas. The bullseye strategy is exciting because I get to hear how knowledgeable my students are on any given topic. They are motivated to want to be viewed as intelligent by their classmates and, through discussion with a variety of students, I can challenge long-held beliefs in a non-threatening manner. You may have students generate their own questions based upon your academic content. The bullseye strategy is a wonderful method for determining how in-depth you must go on any given topic or for reviewing information prior to an assessment. As always, if students do not want to participate, I use this active learning strategy anyway. I always try my best to get 100% compliance, but if it seems likely that certain students will not partake, I respectfully tell them if they should change their minds, they are more than welcome to join the circle. In addition, I let them know we will be using this strategy again in the future, and maybe, once they see and hear how this technique works, they will be more willing to share their insights. Okay, I need your attention please. Attention back up here. You know students, the great thing about the bullseye strategy is that it works with opinion based questions as well. They don't always have to be factually based. So what I would like to do is to ask you an opinion based question. And the more information that you have to support your opinion, the further I want you to step forward. Understood? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask the question, and I want you to ponder it for a moment or two before you move. And here's the question. Congress, which is our lawmaking body, has determined that your test scores and test scores of children across the country are not high enough. What can we do to get those scores higher? They have decided they're going to pay you for your grades. Oh. Yeah, you like that idea, Josh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So is that a good idea? Or is that not such a good idea? Definitely a good idea. <laughs> well, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it for a moment or two. And then I'm going to have you move. Go ahead. What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? You got some ideas in your heads? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I want you to step forward according to the amount of information that you have to support your opinion. Go ahead and move. I recently heard about this on the news, that this was happening in some places, and it seems to have good results. Alright, I was unaware of that. So it seems as though, in some places across the country, it's already happening. And if there's good results, why not extend it across the country? I like that. Now, Josh, i got to ask you, because when we started this, 
you were all enthused and you liked that idea of students being paid for grades. So why is that such a great idea? Well, I think it's a good idea for high schoolers especially because when you're in high school you usually have to get a job to pay for car insurance and such. And well, one of the good reasons is if they pay you to get good grades, you're going to get good grades so therefore you're going to have lower car insurance. And sometimes kids like to try, to try to find jobs and they can't get good grades and work their job at the same time. So therefore it's harder for them to get lower car insurance and sometimes they have to drop out of their job. This way they can make money and still get good grades. I like that. So if students are paid for their grades, it's going to make them more responsible citizens. That's a good answer. I think it's a bad idea because if you're studying for money and getting good grades for money, I feel it's the wrong reasons. You should be studying and trying hard and um, doing well on tests because you want to and you want to set yourself up for the future. I like that. He's talking about studying hard because it's going to put him on a good path. And that's called an intrinsic reward. You do it because in your heart you know it's the right thing to do. Excellent. Uh, other feelings on this? We all know the old adage, good things come to those who wait. I'm all about patience, but there needs to be some balance. Some of our students may just wait a lifetime for something good to mysteriously fall into their laps. Maybe a more appropriate expression to instill within our students would be, Good things come to those who go out and make good things happen. Like you, I do not want my students to have a false sense of reality. After giving them the necessary time to ponder the requirement, activity, assignment, or some other expectation, I encourage them to begin the process of actually making it happen.